Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. Pete. And we are going to do some audience questions for you guys. Hey, love them. Love them. So let's hey. get right into it. Richard writes, what do you guys think of Superman being rebooted to be darker? If the WB asked you to be part of the creative team, what direction would you take with the Man of Steel? Well, personally, I would take it like super dark, like have yeah. to be like up dark, super bad. Yeah. You know, with like he'd have emo hair and be yeah. like whatever. I'm just taking like Spider Man have, three. He should thing. have a gun that shoots blood. Oh, that'd like be really sharp. Cool. Sharp. I think well, if look. there's anything Superman needs, it's a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, oh, I feel like if you're gonna do, if you're like, hey, let's make a dark Superman, I would say don't pick Superman. I don't think <laughs> that is a dark right comment. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tricky Pete logic. That's uh, yeah. I don't. I don't want to see a dark Superman. I think he's kind of like the shining beacon of what's supposed to be right. <laughs> I would compare right the the Superman most in tone to Iron Man. That I feel like a lot of people didn't really hook into the thing that was so great about Iron Man was it's a fun superhero movie. Certainly, he goes through the, some moments of being upset and sad because. Right. A hero well, in a movie has to be down at a certain point before he can pick himself back up. No, but Superman doesn't ever come across as like the super fun guy. He comes across like very uh, Steve Rogers Captain America. I think uh, where it's like Boy Scouty, of course, and all that. Oh, I think what you're saying is like, yeah, like making Superman not necessarily dark but vulnerable is what is the nice thing about you can do with him, which is good, which I think works. A lot in comics when they do that is when they kind of show that he's not uh, always yeah. perfect. I mean, you don't have to have like Lex Luthor going around being like, "Would you like to know how I lost all my hair?" <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just saying, you, you don't, don't have to. Real. No, that well, was, that please, that please don't you. Yeah, okay, that was so if you were in charge of Superman, what direction would you take it in? Uh, I mean, that's tough. There's been so many takes on it, uh, but I mean, you just have to. Uh, explore the character. The alien uh, aspect is what is the strongest thing for me. Like, figure out how to relate him to human culture and finding his place in the world. That's where the power of the character is. When they get into all these kind of forced uh, dark takes or forced this take, that take, I think that's where it starts to seem for like fake. You know? I, go ahead. If you're... Oh, no, no. I was going to say the Christopher Reeve Superman, and I mean specifically how Christopher Reeve portrayed Superman, is so iconic. Yeah, I would try yeah. to, without copying Christopher Reeve, obviously, but try to do something like that, take elements of that, the dichotomy of the character between Clark Kent and Superman, put it into a actually spectacular setting that doesn't feel over-serious and over-earnest. The over-earnest one should be Superman. And right. otherwise, it should be the world, and he inspires everybody through. Yeah, because he's trying to find his place. That's this whole. And more importantly, give him something that he can punch. I, I'm serious. Through, like all the way through. Yeah, well, give him something that he he can fight. Give him a doomsday. Uh, give him a kryptonite man. I don't know. I don't care. It was nice, made up. I would start by no, saying, no. "How the hell am I in charge of Superman? I don't even like Superman." But then I would follow up by... <laughs> very real, you yeah. say. Uh, I, would I shouldn't be writing a movie? I would like to see I like Superman... <laughs> I would like to see, like, a uh, Superman when he starts, like, fighting crime and is, like, trying to do stuff, but, like, always picking stuff up and breaking it, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you, and, like, crushing people, and, like, really, <laughs> so, really like, destroying so them. So, like, of my and Superman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then go into, like, an 80s so, like, montage. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then doing, like, an 80s montage of, like, him, like learning to get better and like kind of like running and like and listen up Warner Brothers <laughs> this movie comes <laughs> out you're on notice and in fact this is why you should not do it. <laughs> like, take over Superman and then after the end of the montage he is great wow. he might even be called super big <laughs> great message this is great alright well big I hope that answered your question uh, Tara writes and Justin, I'm going to turn this over to you in a second. Great. I was wondering why in the world you guys haven't reviewed Robinson's Superman run. Like, Justin, I'm a huge fan of Robinson uh, and was ecstatic when I heard he was writing Big Blue. Not so much after three issues. I think it's been downright awful and possibly the most disappointing run I've ever read. I'd love to see if other people feel the same way I do about this run. Justin, Justin, go! Justin, go! Justin! If I can get real with you for a second yeah. um, he's taking it down one of the reasons I haven't talked about it is because I'm depressed 
darkly depressed about this run the same way you are. I mean, we have a high standard for James Robinson. Starman defined, practically defined DC during the 90s as the great comic that was coming out. And now we have James Robinson on Superman with uh, three issues that were stagnating with this character we don't understand and have no interest in. Very un-nuanced stories. And then all of a sudden, Crypto comes in, and we have this weird forced, like, dog love that we have to get into. And frankly, it doesn't make any sense. I I and it is. It's not a very good run. And you got to, maybe these lead-up issues, uh, he had to do them to pave the way for New Krypton somehow. But for God's sakes, when's it going to get better? People, it's time to change. Uh, forget Obama McCain. Let's get something going on uh, Superman. Hell. Guys. I think what Justin's trying to say is the reason we didn't talk about it is because it sucks. There you go. All right, Brandon writes, Hey guys, I was wondering what you thought about the Iron Patriot that Bendis mentioned in an interview with Newsarama about the Dark Avengers and Dark Reign. My guess is that Iron Man won't be around after Secret Invasion and Bucky decides to end the Civil War conflict once and for all, so he becomes a mix of Iron Man and Captain America. Wow. wow. That's a crazy plan. Well, here's the thing. First of all, I would say, uh, interesting idea. Uh, that is not going to happen because Bucky... Though he is appearing in Secret Invasion, I do think is relatively untouchable until Brubaker is done using him in Captain America. Very so that's not going to happen. That being said, Iron Patriot. Obviously, that uh, means some mix between Iron Man and Captain America or something like that, right? Uh, well, I think there's going to be some... Iron Man's been set up to take a fall, uh, I think. And I think Secret Invasion is going to lead to him uh, ending in a very bad place. He has to, there has to be some retribution from Civil War and all of his leadership during the Secret Invasion. And I think at the end of this, we're going to see him in a much lower place. And I think that's part of what this means. Dark Reign, I think. He's obviously been the leader in the Marvel Universe, and he's going to suffer for leading it down the wrong path. Uh, I feel that Bendis was wasted. And what he meant to say was an Iron Pepper Potts. That's what I think he meant to say. <laughs> That's here's, here's what I actually think. I think he's doing a little bit of misdirection. It's probably not a big thing. It's probably uh, Vision, who originally was Iron Lad, and you have Patriot, both from the Young Avengers, and probably like they joined together and created like, some sort of Iron Patriot suit to fight Skrulls in the last issue, and it's probably just one fun moment. I really think he's, he can't tell you anything about Secret Invasion, so he's just throwing something out there. But he's the kind of guy that's going to leave, like, the clue he leaves is going to mean something. For God's sakes, that's what the whole, this whole Secret Invasion thing has been about. I've showed you this already, why don't you get it? I think Iron Patriot is going to be some kind of person that's going to challenge Iron Man for uh, leadership or some kind of thing. And take Iron Man down the Or it could just be, like, a newspaper headline, who is the Iron Patriot, just, uh talking about Iron Man, is he really a patriot? Like you're saying, there's all these hearings, why did the initiative fail? Why did right. they prevent this invasion? We're taking you out of office, uh, we're shaving your mustache, we're making you drink some alcohol. Don't, uh, don't shave his mustache. Yeah, whatever you do. Actually, give him the goatee back. The mustache yeah, is the mustache. mustache. Yeah, goatee! Yeah. All right, that is your questions for this time. If you guys have a question, you can write us at thecomicbookclub at yahoo.com. You can also subscribe here on this channel. We like subscribers. Please do. Yeah, Turn off your cool. TV. Comment right below. I'll upload our video response. And if you're ever in New York City on a Tuesday, 8 o'clock at the pit, we do a live show. It's a lot of fun. And thank you for watching. <laughs> That's also not a good question. I had my role in this show. <laughs>